In the top stories, Director of Public Prosecution refutes claims of political bias. Ministry of Foreign Affairs acknowledges vehicle donation from international partners and probing in its lecture format changed due to COVID-19. The details on these stories and more after the break. Ease the squeeze with Digicel. Win $1,000 in groceries monthly. Get your chance when you activate any Digicel Prime bundle, pay your bill in full, sign up for a new postpaid or home entertainment package, or simply just join the Digicel family. It's that simple. Be one of four lucky winners selected every month from January to March to participate in our Ease the Squeeze shopping sweepstakes. Digicel gives you more so you can ease the squeeze. Digicel, better together. Without limits, happy and free The skin you're in with no apology The one to seize the day Grab a net, let her be Live, love, be Stura lemon lime and bitters live love be Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Calla Barrage. Director of Public Prosecutions Valston Graham has cleared the air on rumors circulating which accuse him of political bias in relation to a case involving Dr. Terence Drew and the Honorable Eugene Hamilton. Mr. Graham said in November 2020, Dr. Drew brought a criminal case accusing Minister Hamilton of bribery in connection with the June 2020 general elections. Mr. Graham asked the court to stand down the matter so he can make an appearance. However, he said this has been met with claims that he is politically affiliated with Minister Hamilton and the PAM party. In a press conference on Thursday, Mr. Graham says he has no political stake in the matter, but rather he felt it was his duty to be involved in a bribery case against a public official. How does it look in, a federa in an independent federation where there's a director of public prosecution that an allegation of bribery against an elected official is being played out in the criminal courts and the, the director of public prosecution just sit idly by and say let me see how this play out it can't be my intervention is simply to ensure that the matter has proper superintendence and proper disposition nothing more he said in this specific case he has called for Dr. Drew's legal team to produce evidence of their claim before he makes a decision. If I have no evidence, I discontinue the matter. If they have evidence, they should have no difficulty in bringing forward the evidence. What is the secret? They're the one who put it in the public domain. They're the one who brought the criminal prosecution. The manager has joined the matter to Monday. We'll back there Monday and we will see where things will come. The case is set to resume on Monday where the evidence is expected to be presented and Mr. Graham will make a decision on the matter. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Aviation, K. Bass, expressed appreciation to several international partners for their generous donation of an ambulance to the Ministry of Health and a passenger bus to St. Kitts and Nevis Red Cross Society that were handed over during a ceremony on Wednesday at the Joseph N. France General Hospital. The vehicles, which were donated by the Government of the United States of America through its Agency for International Development, USAID, with assistance from the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society, will aid St. Kitts and Nevis in bolstering its health system. We again thank the U.S. Government through USAID and the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent for continuing to engage with bilateral and multilateral donor partners to coordinate global response efforts, identify funding needs, address operational challenges, and to select the most appropriate mechanisms to fill identified response gaps. Indeed, the ambulance will fill a well-needed gap. Ms. Bass noted that the donation is timely and significant. The ambulance, a single item, may be perceived small, but it is, in, it is indeed significant 
in light of the fact that one, it has been gifted and will more than likely free up funds, perhaps originally allocated in the ministry's budget, to be channeled to bolster other aspects of the health system. Two, it will undoubtedly enable the health teams to respond more quickly to medical emergencies. And three, it will facilitate faster medical treatment, thereby enhancing service delivery. Speaking briefly on the coronavirus pandemic, Ms. Bass said that one truism highlighted is that in an increasingly interconnected world, a health threat anywhere is a health threat everywhere, adding that countries were prompted to close their borders to protect lives and livelihoods. She applauded the United States government for its continued support, especially during the pandemic. Further, this pandemic is a stark reminder that many of the pressing health issues facing nations are now inherently transnational, if not global. Locally, we have been calling for all of society approach and globally requires no less. Indeed, it has reinforced the responsibility of countries with the wherewithal to support countries with limited resources to tackle health problems within their own borders. The ministry and by extension the government of St. Kitts and Nevis commends the United States for not only recognizing its responsibility but also fulfilling it, be it through donation of equipment, building capacity, or provision of financial resources to assist countries to combat the spread of the virus. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Aviation, KPAS. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the History and Heritage Committee has opted to host the Sir Probin Ennis Memorial Lecture virtually. This was revealed by Chairman of the Committee, Percival Hanley, in an interview with ZIZ News. A lecture which is styled the Sir Probin Ennis Memorial Lecture is a signature event for the week of activities bearing the name of its founder, Sir Probin Ennis. And so we thought at least putting that on would be commendable and so we decided to work with the University of West Indies who are the persons who normally sponsor it and so they have again this year we thank them very much and they have uh, decided to put it on but instead of the live event that we normally do we have decided because of the COVID-19 situation that we'll do it in a, 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 a virtual um, format. He explained that the format of the lecture will include an open forum where persons can interact with the lecturer. The, the format we have um, is that we'll first have an opening um, situation where we'll have someone delivering opening remarks, then there'll be an introduction of the speaker, and we'll tell him more about the speaker in a while, and then we'll have the, the speaker making his presentation, which will be about 40 minutes, after which the program will be open for people to make their comments or ask any questions that they may have. Okay. Hanley also revealed the speaker chosen for the lecture and the topic. Okay, first of all, the, we tried getting a local speaker in the medical profession to try to um, deal with the topic. But unfortunately, because of their involvement with the COVID-19, more than one, they were unable to um, work with us in this regard. So we thought maybe since U UWI, Open Campus, was um, the ones who were um, sponsoring it, uh, they thought of going to their university campus to see if they can find someone. And they were referred to an epidemiologist, which is almost um, a perfect match um, for this discussion. And they were directed to a gentleman by the name of, he's, he's a professor, John Peter Figueroa as I said, epidemiologist, and the, the topic is a history of epidemics in the Caribbean. He explained that the topic is significant because of the current situation with the pandemic, so the committee saw it fit to choose a topic that will help people to understand and deal with the situation. Hanley said the links for the lecture are posted to the University of the West Indies Open Campus Facebook page. The lecture will be on Tuesday, March 7th at 7 p.m. 
And in other national news, the private sector is coming on board to assist the COVID-19 vaccination efforts in St. Kitts. In a post-cabinet briefing for this week, Director General of the St. Kitts Navis Information Service, Les Roy Williams, said cabinet was informed of a private entity's plans to assist with the vaccine rollout. Additionally, the task force shared with the cabinet that the private sector entity was offering physical space and human resources in the vaccination rollout process and support in diagnostics going forward. Mr. Williams also outlined plans to host informational sessions similar to the consultation at Ross University and at ECCB headquarters earlier this week. Minister of Health Honorable Akila Baron Nisbet said community groups such as churches and clubs can request an information session to learn about the vaccine through the Ministry of Health. After the break, sustainable agriculture promotes food security and a healthy lifestyle. And Superintendent Cromwell Henry shares his experience of taking the COVID-19 vaccine. Stay with us. There is no better time to discover what your National Bank Visa debit or black cards can do. Mimi, what's that song? It can get you out of a pickle. Using my National Bank Visa card is fast, secure, and convenient. Cashless SKN is our new lifestyle choice. National Bank, always here. Horseworth Building and Nevis Centers are making lawn and garden easy! Come to Horseworth Building and Nevis Center now and get 25% off school life on our entire lawn and garden department! Yes! For the months of February and March, Horseworth Building Center and Nevis Center is making improving your lawn and garden easy! 25% off all garden supplies, garden equipment, garden accessories, including weed eaters, lawnmowers, and much more! Get 25% off all lawn and garden items happening now at Horseworth Building Center in St. Kitts and Nevis. Forceworth Building and Nevis Centers. Making home improvement easy. Get ready for an exciting year with Flow Broadband and TV connecting you at home. Sign up now and get a free Samsung tablet worth over $900. Up to 100 megabits per second blazing internet will keep everyone on top of everything every day. While Flow TV delivers the best home entertainment with the latest shows on demand in HD plus favorites you can record. Visit your nearest Flow store today to sign up for Flow Broadband and TV and get your free Samsung tablet. Conditions apply. We are all essential in the fight against COVID-19. At Courts, we're doing our part and we encourage you to stay at home, stay safe and shop online at www.shopcourts.com. For other convenience, our Courts online customers will receive free delivery and get up to 20% off televisions, appliances, and homewares. Plus, if you shop with Ready Finance, you will pay nothing down for 60 days. Now, you can stay home, shop online, and save. Remember, do the essential. Wear a mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing, stop the spread. Welcome back. The coronavirus pandemic has threatened many aspects of human life and food security is no exception. Through sustainable agriculture, farmers can provide a constant supply of healthy, nutritious food, be it meat or fruits and vegetables, for public consumption. This was made evident by Crops Program Leader in the Department of Agriculture, Ian Chapman, who was speaking on Working For You on Wednesday, which focused on the theme Sustainable Agriculture in Challenging Times. We know that a sustainable agricultural support approach to, to our ministry will ensure and make our food system more productive and the environmentally benefits of the sustainable and resilient um, approach that our ministry is now 
trying to tackle this. Of course, we all know the whole lot of benefits of fruits and vegetables, and I could go into that a little later in my presentation, but coupled to the whole reasons why the whole United Nations would have been addressing or uh, labeling this year to be what um, announced as the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables, you could see that um, lighten that the COVID-19 pandemic has really challenged our farmers and by extension our extension services to provide um, or find new ways of creating and improve our nutrition and our market opportunities to our people. He added that the production of local crops and the harvesting of local meats help to eliminate the unhealthy chemicals that are placed on imported food to preserve them until they reach into the consumer's hand. The availability of locally grown food ensures that there is a healthier supply of food to satisfy the citizens' need for food and nutrition. Additionally, it reduces the fear that citizens may face about the unavailability of food due to the import-export challenges associated with COVID-19. We are really promoting the healthy, promoting healthy diets to strengthen the, our immune system because we know when we eat these foods and the benefits that the antioxidants and the various vitamins will provide from eating your fresh fruits and your vegetables will build that immune system that will make you so much more what you would say um, better. I'm not withstanding that we have to take the vaccine as a precautionary measure but of course ensuring that promoting our fruits and vegetables aspect of eating in today will help with our immune system because if we are not health eating healthy as everybody would say, a healthy, a healthy nation is a rich nation and by extension our people will be able to function well if we eat well and properly. Mr. Chapman said that one key initiative by the Department of Agriculture to help promote healthy eating is the Farmers Agriculture Assistance Program that will assist farmers in enhancing their productivity. Divisional Commander in charge of District A, Superintendent Cromwell Henry, says he is doing well after being one of the first persons to receive the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine on Monday. On this week's edition of Policing with You, the superintendent joined host Inspector James Francis and shared his experience noting that receiving the vaccine was reminiscent of vaccines he has received in the past. Well, I couldn't call taking a, a rubella, mums and measles. Uh, vaccination a few years ago. Mm -hmm. This one was no different to that. I could recall my experience back then. Uh, you, you felt the, the the needle as it was inserted mm -hmm. and this, the, the site was sore a couple of days after mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, back then. It's the same experience I have I had this time around. Mm -hmm. I felt the needle as it entered and then after it just felt tender and sore. Mm -hmm. And it's easing daily. It's not as bad as it was uh, uh, on Monday, right. but I'm fine. No other side effects, no fever, no headaches, nothing. I went back to work right after. Mm. Work the next day, and I've been working every day since. Mm -hmm. so no, 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 it's no complications, no reaction at all. Superintendent Henry said other officers who received the vaccine have experienced minor side effects, but have since recovered. Commissioner himself, he, he went back to work after he took his, in, his, his vaccination, he came out to work the next day and he's indicated that he hasn't had any, any, any effects after. Uh, there was one officer who, who complained of a slight headache, uh, but that has since been, been worn off. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another officer who had a slight fever, mm -hmm. but that was the extent of the, of the, of the side effects. Mm -hmm. right. They were able to work the following day. Mm -hmm. And that is expected mm -hmm. for, 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 for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the, the expected normal side effects of the vaccine. Okay. Slight headaches, slight to moderate headaches, fever, muscle ache, that sort of thing is expected. Mm -hmm. I'm told that is the body's reaction uh, to, the, to, to the vaccine mm -hmm. and the beginning of the process of creating the antibodies that would fight the virus. On Monday, 70 persons, including government officials and frontline workers, received the first doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine at a ceremony at the Newtown Community Center. Policing with you airs every Thursday from 9.15 a.m. on the morning show with GQ. The Ruth Lybird Foundation has donated a life alert medical device to a member of the Kayon community, Orlando Sutton, known as Yogi, who lost his leg. According to a press statement from the foundation, with the support of 
with the support and donations from members both in the community and the diaspora. The Ruth Liburd Foundation's RLFMA project worked with members of the community to secure some relief in the form of a medical alert device. The life alert device was handing over to Mr. Sutton by member of the Kaon community, Kervin Benjamin. On behalf of the Ruth Liburd Foundation and the Kaon Knights Football Club, we're here to present that Yogi, Yogi what's his club? So so with this life alert, you know what I mean? One love. With a lot, a lot of love. The foundation noted that the life alert was deemed necessary as Mr. Sutton is alone most times and the uncertainty and fear of there being an accident or medical episode are grave concerns that continue to worry him, his family and friends. The life alert allows Yogi to press a button and alert six individuals in the community to his aid. And finally on the local scene, St. Kitts has been featured three times on Travel Pulse in the past week. On February 23rd, Brian Major, managing editor of Travel Pulse, published his recent interview with St. Kitts Tourism Authority CEO Raquel Brown, titled St. Kitts and Nevis Protocols Ignite Tourism Relaunch, focusing on the reopening of the borders. Major Major queried CEO Brown about the establishment of the travel protocols and the status of tourism. On Sunday, Travel Pulse featured St. Kitts and Nevis in its roundup of safest Caribbean destinations to visit in 2021, noting that it is the only Caribbean nation to hold a level 2 travel rating from the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Consular Affairs. Furthermore, it holds a level 1 low COVID-19 risk rating by the CDC. Last week, St. Kitts was also featured on Travel Pulse after announcing the start of the hashtag Retire the Knot photo contest, which will see a lucky winner from the U.S. receive a complimentary trip to St. Kitts to renew their vows in St. Kitts' first ever group vow renewal scheduled to take place in November. Travel Pulse is a leading source of industry news, dynamic video content, and important supplier and destination information that have allowed hundreds of thousands of travel agents to succeed. Their website averages 800,000 unique visitors every month, and its content reaches approximately 90% of the U.S. travel agent market. Coming up in regional news, floods in Brazilian states submerge entire neighborhoods. We'll tell you more when we come back. Get ready. Power up in February at Hortzman's Value Mart IGA. Yes, in February, we are giving you three ways to power up. One, power up your Value Club points in February. Yes, for the first time ever, every Value Club customer will earn double points on all Value Club purchases at Value Mart in St. Kitts and Two, power up in our Power Play, where lucky customers win their purchases free. Three, power up your savings with the Hortzman's Value Value Mart Red Tag Value Deals. Yes, power up the savings with huge discounts on select Value Deals items. So, power up your points with double points on all Value Club purchases. Power up your savings with rock bottom prices on our new Red Tag Value Deals. And be a lucky customer to win your purchases free in our Power Play. Power up in February at Hortswood Value Mart IGA. Don't miss it. Terms and conditions apply. Oh, It takes a village to raise our children into productive citizens and a progressive community. It takes a village to provide support to our young people who are going down the wrong path and need family and community support. It takes a village to help our children who have made a mistake to take responsibility and learn from their mistakes. It takes a village to actively help in the rehabilitation of our youth. To assist them in being productive. To reintegrate back into our communities. It takes a village to care about each other. To lift up our children. And make them into better adults. It, it takes, takes a, a village. village to give our youths a chance for change. Join the movement. And give our children a chance for change. This message is brought to you by the USAID OECS Juvenile Justice Reform Project 2, funded by the United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to oecs.org forward slash JJRP. <laughs> Thank you.
And we're moving now to news on the regional scene. Heavy rain in Brazil's northwestern state of Acre has submerged the entire neighborhoods. At least 120,000 people are affected by flooding and a state of emergency has been declared. Al Jazeera's Sarah Carret reports. Assessing damage from above the clouds, Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro flies over thousands of flooded streets and homes. Entire towns and villages are submerged after the Acre River burst its banks. Back on the ground, the health minister updates him as the impoverished Amazonian state appeals for federal aid. This natural disaster is happening as Brazil is struggling with the world's third largest number of COVID-19 cases. Acre is one of the poorest states in the country and as well as the pandemic, nearly 8,000 of the people here have been infected by dengue virus. It also has hundreds of migrants from Haiti waiting to cross into Peru that has closed its border because of coronavirus. The government says it's doing all it can. We have a team of almost 40 people working on this situation in supporting the fight against COVID-19 and dengue as well as the consequences of the floods and migrant crisis and their impact on people's health. 70% of Sena Madureira, one of the worst hit cities, has been affected by the floods and more than 4,000 families have been relocated. Water levels in several municipalities have started to fall. But more rain is expected this week and a state of emergency has been declared. Sarah Khairat, Al Jazeera. In Ghana, police in the East Berbis region is connecting the dots as the investigation continues into the rape of a 97-year-old woman, four in custody, one being sought. Here are the details from Travis Chase. The rape and beating of a 97-year-old Berbis woman has resulted in the arrest of four men who detectives believe committed the crime. Vic Anand Sharma called Vico. Ryan Ben called Redman, Ryan Piran called Banga, and Arnold King, all of Rosehall Tongue Burbis, are the men in custody. The elderly woman's caregiver told reporters that the incident occurred Tuesday morning when she was called out to check on the woman. A medical examination, according to the police, has since confirmed that the woman was sexually assaulted. So when we get over, we saw her that she was face, um swell up and bust up and she told me that they they throw they push their hand down she threw it but when we cleaning her skin to take her to the doctor we find that um like they have sex with her you know so we the police come and the police didn't really do anything they just look and just ask her a few words and they go away and say that um if we get knowledge of whoever did it let me get her back to them. The elderly woman remains hospitalized as the investigation continues. Statements are being taken from the men in custody and police are focusing mainly during the interrogation on the whereabouts of the men at the time the incident occurred. Well, no neighbor no, said that they didn't hear any song. No, no, what time did this happen? Well, I can't really say what time it happened. But you but, discovered this morning? But that I discovered this morning when Auntie Brenda come and called me. Because we supposed to take her out to a function, uh, that um, an elder function. And we told her that we're going to come and bathe her early this morning. Divisional Commander Jairam Ramla Khan would not immediately comment on the issue, but would only say that the matter is under investigation. Nightly News learned on Wednesday that the men are still being interrogated by detectives and that the lawmen in the East Burbis region are hunting a fifth suspect in connection with the crime. Travis Chase, HGP, Nightly News. 
Coming up, Guinea launches Ebola vaccination. We'll tell you more when we come back. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. Guinea has launched an Ebola vaccination campaign to halt the spread of the deadly disease which hit the country's south this month and has already caused several deaths. The vaccination drive got underway on Tuesday in the area where the first cases were detected on February 14th, the World Health Organization said, adding that the launch started with the vaccination of health workers. Al Jazeera's Victoria Gatenby reports. Health workers vaccinate people against Ebola in the town of Gueke in southeast Guinea. A new outbreak was discovered near here almost two weeks ago. I am very proud to be vaccinated and it's a joy to me to see the population get vaccinated, especially those on the front line, all my staff. It allows us to be safe, protected from this disease because Ebola is not a good thing. 11,000 vaccine doses and 200 health experts arrived in Guinea's capital, Conakry, on Monday. The government and the World Health Organization hope the vaccination campaign can stop the virus spreading by April. To help the fight against Ebola, we interrupt the chain of transmission by targeting the first contacts of Ebola patients and also the health workers on the front line who are exposed, including those who apply the vaccines. Ebola causes severe fever and, in the worst cases, unstoppable bleeding. In 2015, more than 11,000 people died after the virus spread from Guinea's forest region to neighboring Liberia and Sierra Leone. The outbreak was contained after an experimental vaccine was distributed, but not before health workers were attacked by people who did not believe in the virus. The vaccine is an extremely useful new tool uh, to end uh, the Ebola outbreak. Uh, but it is not the only pillar of an uh, Ebola response. Um, the other essential aspects of an Ebola response need to happen as well. And it always comes back to community engagement. The WHO has warned six African countries to be on high alert for Ebola, including Sierra Leone and Liberia. The hope is this campaign will stop the virus from spreading any further and potentially save thousands of lives. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. At least six people have died and several are missing after a landslide at an illegal gold mine in Indonesia's central Sulawesi province. Locals say about 20 people were mining at the site when makeshift wooden structures collapsed. I'll just leave just On the Sulawesi Island. From On Sulawesi Island in the district of Purigimotong, a familiar scene the aftermath of another illegal mining disaster in Indonesia. Authorities believe there were 22 people here when the mine collapsed, but survivors told local media there could have been more. Military police and the local disaster agency are working together to assist the community. Makeshift wooden frames built on unstable soil broke down during the night. First responders faced the challenge of searching for survivors in the dark. We are doing search and evacuation by emptying the stagnant water and it's quite difficult because of the darkness. Fatalities at unauthorized mines are common in mineral-rich Indonesia, attracting thousands of unskilled laborers with no training or proper safety equipment. Experts estimate there are close to 9,000 unlicensed mines, around a quarter of them gold. In 2019, at least 16 people were killed when a mine collapsed, also on the island of Sulawesi. Datam is an advocacy network for safer and more sustainable mining. It has long pushed for comprehensive investigations into illegal operations. Many people in local governments and law enforcement are involved in it. They conduct raids, close the mines down, and just a few months later, the operation is back on. 
Local environmental groups say it is up to the government to help these communities find more sustainable and less risky work. The situation for cacao farmers in central Sulawesi is not good. They are in a bad economic condition, so they have to risk their lives in these mining pits. It's dangerous and often low-paid work, but those who keep returning to these mines say they have no choice. Jessica Washington, Al Jazeera, Jakarta. Up next in sports, we have the results of the SKNFA matches on Wednesday. Stay with us. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. Sports, Sadler's FC and St. Peter's FC each delivered demolition jobs of their own in the SKNFA Premier League midweek action on Wednesday, defeating their opponents 8-2 and 6-0 respectively. We first start with Sadler's in this report from SKNFA media consultant, Andre Huey. Pascal Sadler's clipped the wings of Deer Bay Eagles 8-2 in SKNFA Premier League football at the Warner Park on Wednesday. Sadler's were gunning from the start for victory and hardly gave Deer Bay any chance of scoring. The Premier League newcomers, however, did manage to score two goals in the second half. Goal scorers Xavier Henry French scoring two goals in the 13th and 45th minute for Sadler's. Carrie Jarvis scoring four goals in the 15th, 25th, 53rd and 90th minutes. Nick Juan Phipps scoring for the penalty spot in the 50th minute. And Evans Roy Barnes scoring in the 84th minute. For Dia Bay, the goal scorer Sean Dacent scoring two goals in the 56th and 78th minutes. Here is commentary of that match broadcast live on the SKNFA website, commentated by Al Edwards and Kenneth Bob. Barnes collects in the middle. Ivan Zoy Barnes gets it back. Slides it into Hanley. Hanley leads on to French again. French this time. This Brilliant. time. Oh. This time. One to Sadler's. 13 minutes. He called for it the first time. And, and, and I'm surprised that the Bay did not make the adjustment in terms of ha having him allow allowing him to make that free run on the left hand side toward the goal. Then in front of the goal, 
Javis, a second time, goal. a second time, and then a second goal. Really Javis goal. converted. Tunnel in three minutes, two goals. Losing out. Sends the man forward again and down the left flank. Phipps sends it to Kwas. Javis. Another attack. lovely finish. Number three. I don't know if you remember the play before. It was intercepted. This time he found the, he was able to release Phipps with some time and some space. Phipps took advantage of that and laid a lovely ball across for Jarvis. And Jarvis did it full justice. Goes towards goal. And flags went up in the air. Is it a goal? Oh, this will be controversial. The goalkeeper took the ball. And apparently, Mr... Paris flagged that he had taken the ball in the goal. Into the box. Phipps. Oh my goodness. Phipps. Whistle goes. Phipps goes. Scores. Number five. Goal to Sadlers. Only no one thing. Only no one thing. Keep coming and coming. And it's a goal. And it's a goal, a lovely corner kick. Adler's now trying okay. to show us how to implode. And there's Diep Bay trying to capitalize on it. What do, can they do something with it? And there's a goal by Diep Bay, a response. Nice little overhead kick. We have Decent. Oh my word. Reflection. Decent gets his second. So let's not talk too quick, Al. Davis is going to look for another. If you go direct, Javis. Barnes puts it over. Brilliant. There. Barnes it's finally does it. Man. Barnes finally does it and they're conceding a penalty in the last two minutes of the second half and Sadler's go up eight goals to two. Sadler's FC will next do battle on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. when they face S. Crave Newtown United while Deer Bay will play Rams Village Superstars at 5 p.m. also on Saturday. All matches will be streamed live on the SKNFA website www.sknfa.com at five U.S. dollars per day. And that Sadler's victory was followed by a 6-0 drubbing of Connery by St. Peter's. Again, we join Andre Huey for the details. St. Peter's FC delivered a demolition job of Saul Allen Auto Supplies Connery FC in Wednesday's SKNFA Premier League action at the Warner Park. Connery were handicapped in goal as having changed their starting goalkeeper Stephen Thompson at halftime. Their substitute goalkeeper Dontre O'Loughlin picked up what appeared to be a knee injury and eventually had to be subbed for one of the outfield players, Keandre Maynard, who suited up between the sticks for the remainder of the match. Poor defending and failure to create enough chances doomed Connery to a comprehensive defeat, as every time St. Peter's were on the attack, they looked dangerous. Here are highlights of that match, commentated by Al Edwards and Essington Watts. Sends it on back to Foy. Foy in the box. Foy can cross. Who's there? He's coming it away. And a shot of goal. He should be there. It's there, St. Peter's. Number oh. 14. That's a Zach very Purcell. Yes, a very good goal there by Purcell. The kind of the defense was scrambling, almost pa panic defending. With the corner this time, in the far post. Headed in! Headed in! And what a start by, by, by St. Peter's. St. Peter's doubling their lead from a corner. Take control, take control, take control, take take control, take control, take control, take control, take control, shoot in the back of the net. Number three! For St. Peter's. No, something, there is something, I'll three goals. And, um. Crosses, picks out the man, Stevens, four. Stevens, good shot, a left foot. There, Taekwon rolls the keeper, Taekwon's on an empty net, and rolls it in. <laughs> Style, passion, and disrespect. Martin is covering. Martin knocks it back to him. Dantre, Dantre misses, and the ball stabbed in by the man Collins. His first goal, number six. He goes wild. Oh. Goal scorers for St. Peter's, Osani Purcell in the 14th minute, Aiden Nurse in the 27th minute, Tyquan Tyrrell scoring twice in the 33rd and 65th minutes, Deonis Stevens in the 45th minute, and Deshaun Collins scoring in the 67th minute. The 2021 SKNFA Premier League continues this weekend with entertaining matches. At 6pm on Friday, SL Horses and Pauls United will face Trafalgar South Stars. 
At 8.30 p.m., KFC United Old Road Jets will play Hobson Enterprises Garden Hotspurs. On Saturday at 5 p.m., Rams Village Superstars will play TGE Deer Bay Eagles. And at 7.30 p.m., Escrave Newtown United will face Fast Cash Saddlers United. And then on Sunday at 4 p.m., Sol Island Auto Supplies Connery FC will play Hot Springs Bath United. And at 6.30 p.m., Flow 4GK and Rockets will do battle with St. Peter's FC. These matches will be streamed in pay-per-view on the SKNFA website www.sknfa.com at five US dollars per day. And that's it for sports. When we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. To avoid getting the coronavirus, remember to wash your hands thoroughly and frequently before and after preparing food, after using the toilet or changing a diaper for a baby, sick person, or the elderly, after blowing your nose, and after leaving large gatherings or moving away from persons who appear ill. Encourage others to wash their hands and also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer of 60 to 70% solution. Stay away from events having large gatherings of people. You can expose yourself to more possible infections in large groups. Also, avoid sharing cutlery, cups, glassware, etc. with others. Viruses can linger on these items and may be transferred this way. Avoid shaking and holding hands and hugging or keeping an infected person in close proximity. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. And we're wrapping up with a recap of the top stories. Director of Public Prosecution refutes claims of political bias. Ministry of Foreign Affairs acknowledges vehicle donation from international partners and probing in its lecture format changed due to COVID-19. And that's the end of the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Berridge. Goodbye. <music>